Hello, good evening, everyone. Warm welcome to Prime Business. Coming up, soya beans processors warn prices of cooking oil will continue to surge as India take over the industry exporting all raw soya beans produced in the country. The whole thing is that you need to put in capital to be able to get the processing going. The capital injection is not there. Industries agree to pay full charge for residual fuel oil to enable sustainable supply without any government subsidy. Solution for them now, like I said, we've also engaged AGI. We have been torn between availability and of the product, which is RFO, or they going for the alternative, which is diesel. Diesel is more expensive. So do, we have agreed that let's take up the subsidy for now, let them have the product available. We've got details of these and many more shortly. Grateful for your time, I am Pius Kojubaka, a look at our stories. Soya beans processors are warning that prices of cooking oil will continue to surge if government continues to neglect the challenges of players in the industry. According to the processors, Ghana's soya beans are all exported to India to be processed into cooking oil and soya bean cake. Then the country imports those products at higher prices. Speaking of the marketplace, leading soya beans processor, who is also the convener of Rice Millers Association, Yao Edupoku said the government should inject more capital to support processes in order to cut down on cost. It is not because um, we cannot or we don't have a market for the cooking oil. The situation is that you need to bring the soy and process. Out of the process, you, you squeeze the, uh, the crude oil and the cake is given to the poultry industry. So it goes hand in hand. Vegetable oil goes hand in hand with poultry. Beautiful. And so before you can get poultry feed, you need the soy cake, mm -hmm. which adds protein to the animal feed. And it's about 28% that you add to the volume. The rest is made up of maize. And then you put the chemicals into it. So without soy, the poultry industry will collapse. And that is what is happening currently. All the talk, all the hula balu has not addressed the main issue. And so we are just going round and round and round and round. And next year I'll come and sit here and say the same thing again. The whole thing is that you need to put in capital to be able to get the processing going. The capital injection is not there because all of us one way or the other, foul, say, uh, you know, fall foul of the, uh, the uh, financial institutions. Because the financial institutions, as they stand now, do not understand agriculture financing. And that's a fact. And so they give agriculture financing just like trading financing. So right. it never works. Agriculture financing should come from patient capital. And then you will nurse it and let it mature. So if you give a processor or a farmer money and you tell the processor or the farmer to pay every 30 days, it is a no-no, it won't work. And that is what has happened. And so all the soya industry took a new dive because we could not get the, um, the equipment to process the soy. And soy is not like maize. Mm -hmm. Some other stories, industries have agreed to pay full charge for residual fuel to enable sustainable supply without any government subsidy. This is a resolution agreed with the Association of Ghana Industries and the National Petroleum Authority after it emerged that the product was in short supply due to the inability of government to pay the subsidies on time. Here is Head of Economic Regulation at the National Petroleum Authority, Abbas Tasunti. Price stabilization and recovery levy is supposed to be self-financing. As I said, the energy sector levies access that this levy is supposed to be used to pay for subsidies on premix for and residual for oil. So what you generate is what you can use to subsidize. Now, I've explained that the prices on the world market have risen, exchange rate has risen significantly. As the prices and the exchange rate rise, it translates into price at the pump. So ideally, we should be passing these increments to the pump. But as you know, because these two products are subsidized, the increment is not passed on to the consumers, which is the premix for consumers and the residual for oil consumers. It has led to accumulation of debt, which is under recovery to be paid to the importers. Because of the inability of this fund to raise enough revenue to pay for the subsidy that has accrued, the suppliers of residual fuel oil have refused to sell the product. So the industry is not getting access to the RFO at all. Now, as a regulator, our focus is not only to ensure that the product is priced appropriately, we also have to ensure availability of the product. 
or non-payment of subsidies is causing a shortage of RFO on the market. And in fact, the industry has been struggling with this for the past one month, in fact, more than one month. Last week, we had companies come into this building saying that we should do something to, for them to get their product. So the solution for them now, and like I said, we've also engaged AGI. We have been torn between availability and of the product, which is RFO, or they're going for the alternative, which is diesel. Diesel is more expensive. So do, we have agreed that let's take up the subsidy for now, let them have the product available. Because the product is available, but the companies are refusing to sell. Because they will sell at a loss now if they should sell it. And therefore, for the past two weeks, the company that's, that has imported RFO has not sold the product, even though it's in tank. So the, the, the focus now is to make sure that the product is available for the industry to have access to it, so the manufacturing of products can go on in the country. Now, the Minister of Finance, Ken Furiata, has expressed worry about funding challenges hampering the fight against climate change. According to him, countries which contribute less to global emissions are made to pay for the effects amid difficult economic times. There is more in this report. The Ghana Country Climate and Development Report is a detailed analysis of the risks, effects and opportunities climate change presents to Ghana. The report is expected to fuel conversations about how Ghana can tap into these opportunities. Speaking at the launch of the report, the Minister of Finance, Ken Ofuriata, expressed worry about the inadequacy of resources in the fight against climate change. This, he says, has led to the unfortunate situation where under-resourced countries which contribute the least to global CO2 emissions are being made to pay for its effect. This period. Um, so we are at a very crucial point in which um, those who have contributed least um, to this um, um, scourge that we are facing are going to have to be responsible um, to, to, to pay for it and we are the least able to. Um, fortunately there seems to be um, a certain level of acknowledgement moving us from mitigation into adaptation, which is what we need, the resources and for that. The World Bank Country Director for Ghana, Pierre Laporte, affirmed the World Bank's commitment to supporting Ghana's fight against climate change. According to him, funding of climate actions has become a challenge not only in Ghana, but across the world in recent times. Yes, we will, uh, you know, at, at the World Bank Group now, uh, climate is at the heart of uh, our thinking in terms of financing. So we are required in every project to make sure that uh, as much as possible, we bring in the, the climate dimension so that we can influence the financing and the activities that we do in this project. Look, like every country, one, one can always do more, no? I mean, we, we must recognize that uh, climate change is not totally a new problematic but uh, it's been uh, you know it's become at the forefront as a challenge more recently and uh, countries like Ghana have, uh, you know, has, have taken time to really get to grasp with uh, the realities of this. Speaking on the importance of the involvement of private sector in fighting climate change, senior country manager at the International Finance Corporation at the World Bank, Carl Kelofa, said, though there is a lot of interest from the private sector, there is also the challenge of mobilizing funds to support this course. He added that a proactive implementation of the transition policy will support energy and agri sectors. And the challenge is how to mobilize private sector, private sector savings, private private sector capital. Um, there's a wealth of interest out there through green instruments or blue instruments or as here in Ghana and green bonds and so how to leverage that to help address these issues. But two, a lot of the sectors being impacted are, are largely our are, are private sector, whether it's the fisheries, whether it's the agriculture sector, whether it's the power sector, and how to help those businesses to transition. The Ghana Country Climate and Development Report explores ways Ghana can pursue its development objectives while are considering the challenges of climate change and the opportunities from the transition. While climate change cannot be solved by any single country, local actions can help manage fiscal and transitional risks as well as bring large opportunities. Let's do something now on insurance because the National Insurance Commission is impressing upon pensioners to invest their lump sum pension benefits with life insurance companies for regular flow of income. Known as annuities, the Commission says this form of insurance policy will ensure that income of pensioners never expire. Deputy Commissioner of Insurance Michael Andor spoke to the media at a nationwide annuities sensitization campaign launched in collaboration with the GIZ here in Accra. 
The thing is that at that point, you, you've stopped, you've finished working. So what you have in your hand is supposed to take care of you for the rest of your life. And the big question is, how does that take care of you for the rest of your life? There are so many, you know, when money is in your hand, you have so many temptations. Eh? You are tempted to do so many things, especially the men. Okay, you could do so many things with it. But the point is that, the point to remember is that this money is supposed to take care of you for the rest of your life. So how do you go about it? One great way of doing it is buying an annuity with that lump sum. It this is how it basically works. You give that lump sum to a life insurance company. The life insurance company will give you monthly sums of money either until you die or up to a certain age. It all depends on the agreement that you go with the life insurance company. So basically that is how annuities work. You buy it with a lump sum. You see the usual life insurance you pay small amount to an to a life insurance company and then at some point you get a lump sum back this is the other way around you give a lump sum to a life insurance company and that company takes care of you it gives you a regular sum either until you die or for a certain number of years and that is basically what we call annuities the the question is that what is the advantage in there the first one is that it helps you to manage your liquidity risk whilst you are in retirement. As I said, if you get a lump sum in your hand, there are so many things that come to mind. You may be tempted to build a house and give it out for, for people to rent, and then you live on the rent income. What if you don't finish that project? Because remember, you have retired at that point. What if you don't finish the project? If you go for a loan, you can't pay it, so you are not likely to get a loan at that point. Now, Jumia Ghana has said it will complement the government's efforts to ensure a stable inflation by providing exclusive offers on all its products to consumers. This, according to Head of Customer Experience, Abigail Ayisi Ufuriwa, is a strategic vision to reduce the burden on citizens through offering high-quality products and goods at competitive prices. She spoke to Joy Business at the launch of the 10th edition of Jumia Black Friday promotion sales. The leading e-commerce platform stands for edition of Earth Jumia Black Friday promotional sales is to offer customers products at discount prices. According to the head of customer experience AEC Oforiwa, the company will stick to old prices of various products. The entire uniqueness stands on the premise that we are giving you the old prices today. It's a price that We are not factoring in the recent economic issues, whatever that's going on, no. We are assuring you that we are giving you yesterday's prices today and customer service on the other hand is, is ready to assist so if you have any order you want to make except for the treasure hunt as I explained before we you would need to participate on that on your own um, but any other queries any form of assistance that you need sometimes you're looking for a particular item you're unable to find it um, if you're able to call um, customer service or contact us via all our social media handles we'll be able to assist you and we also do have discounts. Now, Jumian is saying that we don't mind making um, little to no profit at all, just so Ghanaians will be comfortable. Because we ourselves as employees, we are consumers. We all know what is happening. So we try to get into the best negotiation with our partners. Our top um, partners were mentioned. We try to get nail them to the best prices that we can and then assist customers generally. Speaking during the launch, country manager for Jumia Ghana, Richmond Carlos Otu also shared insight on the customer experience as well as plans and strategies to ensure that customers enjoy the best deals and excellent services. Across our chain, in terms of logistics, and in terms of the entire Jumia, we look at sustainability. Sustainability is key for our business, ensuring that whatever we're doing is not having an adverse impact on the environment and not having an adverse impact on our consumers and also on our sellers. As you can see around, we have a couple of our e-mobility uh, vehicles. So you know today, I think most of you know, right? Four was 14 on Monday. Today it's what? 17.49 as of this morning when I checked, right? So we understand the growing concern of the fact that four keeps increasing. And so on our part as well, we're looking at how do we ensure we, we keep delivering sustainable 
the sustainable way. The 10th edition of the Black Friday promotional sales runs from 4th to the 27th of November 2022. Over 130 subscribers of the satellite broadcast service provider SES HD Plus Ghana won the first draw of the HD Plus Oricodo Double Double promotion. The promotion was initiated as a reward for both new and existing subscribers for the 2022 World Cup season. Speaking at the presentation ceremony, Chief Executive of SES HD Plus, Theodore Asampong, indicated his outfit prioritizes the customer, hence inventing initiatives that excite them. Participating customers of the HD Plus Oricodo Double Double promotion will enjoy the live World Cup football matches and get the chance to win an all expense paid trip for two to Dubai for the Christmas holidays, in addition to over 1,700 prizes to be won from 15th September to 5th December 2022. Chief Executive of SES HD Plus, Theodore Isampong, said, This is to acknowledge loyal customers. Well, uh, after two years of being in operation, we wanted to do something to reward our loyal customers as well as uh, new uh, viewers who want to uh, try HD+. So this promotion is launched to say thank you to our customers, uh, old and new. We are launching another exciting device. It's called the CI Plus module. It's a decoder, but it's not really a decoder. It's like a credit card size that goes behind your TV in a slot. So we're doing that with Electroland and their NASCO TVs. So without the need of a decoder, you can uh, slot this CI Plus module at the back of your TV, which is connected to a satellite, the same as the multi-TV satellite, and you can receive your HD Plus uh, channels without the, the decoder. The top prize for the day, a trip to Dubai for two, was won by Samuel Nambu, a teacher from Ejumako in the central region. He commended the company for honoring their promise and entreated all to partake in the promotion. I won a, a trip for two to Dubai. God's willing, uh, I'll go with my son. Uh, he's my everything. I feel very excited and uh, I think I'm so honored to have uh, such a prize. I saw a commercial on the, the uh, television that is as I was seeing my HD plus decoder and so I subscribed to a short code star 844 star 8 hash and then uh, I was entered into the draw other lucky HD plus subscribers won 65 inch TV sets blenders free HD plus subscriptions Bluetooth speakers and other household appliances Benjamin Atubra, one of the winners, expressed his excitement. My decoder subscription will end at uh, two months ago. Then I subscribe to three months, which is 60 Ghana. Then after the subscription, you know, they send me a message that I can enter into the draw. Then I entered. Then just this Monday, that's the first. Then they called me that I've won the promo. So they will called me on WhatsApp to talk. Yeah. Then yesterday to yesterday too they said I should come to Kanishi yeah for my promotion. Uh, I want everybody to be part in the promotion because it's real. Get 60 Ghana cities but then I want the microwave. So it's very it's very true. The HD Plus or record double double promo is run on the Caritas Lottery platform of the National Lottery Authority NLA and will end on 5th December 2022. You're still watching Prime Business with me, Pios Kojobaka. The Etrima Kwabina Rural Bank is enforcing stringent risk management practices to mitigate the negative impact of the unfavorable economic environment. This includes strengthening the background checks of clients when lending. Chief Executive Samuel Bonso Setra says, to remain profitable, the bank's business advisory team is working hard to help customers thrive. Nana Yaojima has the following report. Makwaoma Rural Bank closed the 2021 financial year with profit before tax of over 7 million cities, paying shareholders good dividends. Though the bank is in good standing, the present economic challenges pose a threat. 
to keep the bank in profitability. Its lending policies are being strengthened with checks on expenditure. CEO Samuel Bonsusetche reveals staff are being trained to adapt to the enhanced business strategies. We are anticipating that the negative economic environment can have an impact on our revenues. So we have already started putting in measures to cut our expenditure so that we'll make the most of whatever we get. And again, I mentioned that we deal with customers who have been loyal over the years. We know their business and they know us. And so when we give money to them, we are confident that we can retrieve those monies. We are not in a position to just deal with, sorry to say, anybody at all. We are very careful because there are so many challenges around. So as we are working on growing our figures, our risk management strategies help us to mitigate the challenges that come with operating as a bank. The bank, through its business advisory services, is also ensuring clients in the small and medium enterprises stay afloat. Already, measures are in place to expand services to the central business district of Kumasi. We have lots of customers within the central business district. And the challenge they have is the distance from the CBD to our nearest branches. And so we want to bridge that gap. That's why we want to set up within the central business district. So we get closer to our customers. And then we'll reach out to other prospective customers who we've spoken to, but because we don't have a presence, they are unwilling to work with us. Yes. So now we hope that when we finally get off with the branch, we'll rope in more customers. And For Joy News, Nana Yaojima Kumase. And that's all in this package by way of Prime Business with me, Pios Kojibaka. It's a pleasure serving you. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com forward slash business. Really?